Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Computer History from us here at Digilog Collection. In this episode I want to talk about uh, this uh, SW TPC 6800 computers which first appeared in 1975 and it was fairly unique for the time and a fairly good machine as well. It had a Motorola 6800 processor and it used a um, interesting bus called SS50 and SS30. Uh, but before we talk about the computer, I want to speak a little bit about uh, the company behind it, which is SWTPC, and that stands for Southwest Technical Products Corporation. And the reason it was called that is because it was based in San Antonio, Texas. The company itself first appeared in 1964, but the, the SWTPC name wasn't adopted until 1967. And what they did is they um, used the fact that at the time, um, building kit electronics was very popular. So they uh, released um, uh, uh, parts for uh, mainly audio um, um, equipment, such as like uh, and amplifiers, filters, uh, things like signal generators, and they would sell those through um, the magazines at the time, such as um, radio electronics or popular electronics. And they slowly grew, adding more and more products to their, um, to their kit line, um, such that in 1975, they started to look at possibly computer kits. And at the time, a few years before that, uh, a person called Don Lancaster built a nice terminal called the TV typewriter. TV typewriter was very popular at the time because it was a terminal you connect, build yourself uh, from TTL Electronics, connect to your TV, and um, it, it rival uh, um, in features terminals which at the time cost more than a thousand dollars. And uh, SWTPC, what they did is they uh, basically sold you uh, the kit in parts, uh, such as they would make the, the boards and they would give you the chips, um, and then you all they had to do is put together again. And that was very su successful for them. Um, the next logical step after that is to basically have their own uh, computer, and that is how in 1975 the SWTPC 6800 computer appeared. It was built around a microprocessor as opposed to TTL Logic, which the TV typewriter was, and uh, therefore it used the Motorola 6800. And they had to uh, design their own uh, uh, back panel bus computer, so they used something called SS50 uh, and SS30. That all, all that means that uh, the main card, such as the memory and uh, the processor, use the 50 pin bus and things like IO, such as like uh, the, the tape uh, readers, disk readers, serial cards, and so on, use, use a small, slight smaller uh, 30 pin bus called SS30. The production time for the uh, SWTPC 6800 ran from about 1975 to about 1979, uh, at which point in time the company. Uh, started using the new Motorola processor, the 6809, and had to make some changes to the bus <clears throat> to allow the higher uh, memory addressing range of the 6809. So the, uh, the, it was manufactured for about, I would say, uh, five years or so. The price point for the machine, you could get one for around $395 or so, and uh, they would also offer uh, a lot of documentation that came with it, such as even the source code of the of the of the uh, BIOS, the MIG bug, and um, uh, operating system, and so on. You had to pay a slightly more money for that. But for four hundred dollars, you could basically have this. You, you needed a uh, terminal to go around with it, and you also needed some kind of data input, such as a tape drive, and later uh, there were disk drives you could get, and that would give you a pretty decent machine for the time. Now that we understand some of the hardware, let's talk a little bit about software. Out of the box, uh, the computer has something called MicBug, which is on the on the processor card, and it's 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 a debug and boot ROM that you could interact with uh, with the internal commands. Uh, as far as the operating system, the most popular one was Flex, uh, written by a company called Technical Software Consultants, and 
Flex was a single user, uh, single threaded operating system. Uh, was we used to load it from an 8 inch uh, floppy disk and it was designed for a 6800 processor. Um, later versions such as Uniflex uh, was their attempt to bring Unix functionality to the Flex operating system and that supported 6809 and required some um, <clears throat> hardware changes uh, to work on 6809 machines. Um, but Flex was actually pretty good for the time. But that wasn't the only thing you could do. Uh, there were other software available for the 6800 Motorola, such as C compilers even, and a lot of other office kind of uh, software. But um, now that we've talked a lot about it, why don't we turn it on and see what it can do? So as you can see, I connected my ADM38 terminal to the SWTPC 6800 using the 25-pin uh, serial cable uh, that is connected to the serial card um, in the SS30 uh, uh, backboard in the computer. Um, so that I don't actually have an operating system I can I can show you. However, the um, um, there's something called Mikbug M I K B O G that uh, allows us that it's in the ROM basically allows us to do uh, basic debugging operations and um, uh, loading uh, straight from power on. Uh, that it accepts different simple commands. Uh, so for example, now uh, I can press C, uh, which which if this was a um, SWTPC terminal, this will now uh, clear the screen. However, the command is slightly different than ADM3 doesn't fully understand. But I can do more interesting things. For example, I can press R and that shows me um, a register dump. So those are the uh, register values for uh, the condition codes, the register B, A, X, um, the program counter, and the uh, stack pointer. Uh, I can also uh, load from the punch tape if I have a punch tape device connected, um, I can I can jump to a user program. So I can load the program and I can jump straight to it. I can also investigate memory. So I can type an address 1090 and it shows me the, the contents of that memory address. And it's FF and I can change it to uh, AA, let's say. Um, so uh, yeah, um, it's basically a very simple program. So once you can use this to load, and then um, then you'll be able to uh, load in OS um, if you don't have a bootloader uh, in one of your I/O cards. Let's look a little bit inside. Now, one thing to keep in mind is the 6800 SWTPC was sold mostly in kit form. So this is not the only form and visual external uh, that you could find it in. Uh, there, 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 there are different shapes and the, the case could have other buttons and sizes. Um, but this was the, one of the most typical one with the, the silver and black and the reset and the power button. So the, the, it's very easy to open. Uh, the, the metal grate uh, slides straight up. Uh, once you unscrew the screws and inside and this is uh, kind of the, the, the most uh, the minimalist uh, inside you can have in SWTPC 6800 um, the, I mentioned how um, the, the computer is two, two, two buses the SS50 over here and the SS30 for the IO cards obviously this is the, the integrated power supply um, the 50 pin uh, bus um, that uh, it's in the front side of the machine. It's the host for the CPU and the memory cards. So the first one here is our memory card, uh, very four kilobyte, and the one in the back is our uh, CPU card. And in the back we have the 30 pin SS30 bus, which actually uh, it's quite done on nicely on the motherboard. Each pin is individually um, labeled. And so is the case for the front one. And this one has a uh, serial connection card, which I um, soldered um, the three serial ports, serial cables needed for communication. Uh, this one didn't have it. 
and that allows me to uh, connect to the machine um, uh, from my terminal, for example, to, to, to use it. Um, <clears throat> the uh, cards have a dress translator on them, so it's a very easy system to design, fairly robust. The, the pins themselves actually are just Molex uh, pins, uh, and so the, and the, um, uh, the, 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 the back plane uh, has uh, the, the male pin and the uh, cars themselves have a female uh, header pin. Um, the problem, one of the problem with this design is that um, uh, they use the, like, the thin uh, plating and it's fairly hard, uh, well I find it very hard to remove those cards and they are not really rated for being taken in and out too many times. Um, and in fact I try to be very careful with mine uh, and not move them around too much. Uh, I try to apply pressure once and I have to be very careful.